So let's talk about meiosis. There's a number of syllabus objectives here. We're not going to go through all of them in this video, but we're going to do most of them. Spermatogenesis and oogenesis we're going to do in the next video. So the role of cell reproduction. We have two processes, mitosis and meiosis. Now, mitosis occurs when we're producing daughter cells with identical genetic information, basically making somatic cells or body cells. And we do this for growth and repair and um, development of the embryo and the fetus, etc. So um, we're going to introduce this term here about homologous chromosomes and more information about that very soon. But remember, we've got um, in the process of sexual reproduction, when mummy and daddy love each other very much, the, um, the sperm and the egg unite and we have half the uh, the DNA or the chromosomes come from dad, half the chromosomes come from mum, so each offspring has, in each of its cells, has two copies of the same chromosome. And that's what we mean here by two copies of the same. Homologous means the same. Two copies of the same chromosome. So we say that the cells have a diploid number of chromosomes, or 2n. And, and so that's all of the body cells. Now, meiosis is the process of producing the gametes, which is the sex cells. So the sperm and the egg, if we're talking about mammals, and they have half the number of chromosomes because um, well, they have half the number of chromosomes and they're involved in sexual reproduction. So because it's half the number of chromosomes, one of each of the homologous chromosomes, we call that haploid or N. Okay, so the sex cells, gametes, have haploid number n and all of the other body cells have um, uh, the diploid number or 2n okay so what do we mean by homologous chromosomes so as you know with humans we have 23 pairs of chromosomes so when we say a pair so essentially they have the same genes on them nearly all of them except for the x and the y chromosome they have the same genes, but they might be different alleles, so different flavours of the same gene. So we have one from mum and one from dad, and they're the homolo homologues of chromosome 1, chromosome 2, etc. So each pair of chromosomes in the somatic cell is known as a homologous pair, 2N, or the diploid. A homologous means the same, so they have the same patterns of genes. Yes, so the homologous pairs... Uh, two individual chromosomes that um, were inherited from each of the parents uh, and they're homologues because they're the same chromosome but they have different versions of the gene. So allele means different versions of a gene. I often say it's different flavours of a gene but different versions of a gene. So just in, by way of a summary, um, that both the, the gametes, the, the ovum uh, and the sperm uh, they have the haploid number. So in this particular example here, there's three chromosomes. So three chromosomes from mum, three chromosomes from dad, and when they come together um, at fertilisation and every cell division after that, we have the diploid number in the somatic cells. So just a little bit more terminology that we need. In a previous video, we talked about DNA replication and the fact that DNA replication is required before cell division. DNA replication is required before making, dividing to make somatic cells in mitosis and also in making the gametes in meiosis. So a couple of terms, we're talking about homologous chromosomes, so one from mum and one from dad. Now, this is in the state before the, cell, before the DNA replication. But before, DNA at, but before cell division, we need the replication. So we actually need um, two versions of each of these homologous chromosomes. So we actually have a total of four. So we actually have four, two of each. And these we can call chromatids. It's a replicated chromosome. So we call them sister chromatids. Two of this one from mum, say, and two of this one from dad. They're actually joined together uh, at this point here called the centromere. Okay, so the, the syllabus object is really not even talking about mitosis at all. It's talking about meiosis. But just as a recap, remember mitosis is the process of producing 
uh, of of it's it, it's a, I guess it's the the separation of the the chromatids um, prior to cell division in somatic cells. Remember, there's four pro, four steps: prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. Um, and in, in in prophase, they condense, and the spindles come out and attach. And then metaphase, they line up across the metaphase plate of the equator. Anaphase, the spindles retract, pulling the chromatids apart. And then in telophase, we start to get that, that uh, nuclear membrane. And then after that, we have cytokinesis, which is the process of the cell division. So that's mitosis, that's a process for um, the somatic cells. Now, meiosis is really what we're focusing on here. This is the process for producing gametes. Now, remember, gametes uh, have the haploid number, or N. So we're producing the sex cells, the sperm and the egg, that have half the number of uh, chromosomes. They have one of each of the homologs, and that's what we're producing in meiosis. And the purpose of that, of course, is for sexual reproduction. Now, really simply, I mean, we can go into the detail of the anaphase and metaphase and all of that sort of stuff, but if we think just really simply, whilst mitosis was a, a one cycle, meiosis is actually a two cycles of division. Meiosis one, what happens in meiosis one is we have separation of the homologs. So we have our, so before cell, before, before DNA replication, we've got a cell that's got. Let's if we're just talking about, um, we're talking about an organism that has one pair of chromosomes, so two homologs of the same chromosome. Then we have DNA replication, and so now we have sister chromatids of the um, that one one pair of homo homologous chromosomes. So they're together as a tetrad. Now, in meiosis one, we have cell division that splits these homologs. Okay, so the two, the sister chromatids of one homolog over here, and the two chromatids of the other homolog over here. And in meiosis two, we have separation of the chromatids so we end up with four gametes from that process of meiosis. Okay, meiosis. So we've got DNA replication, and then we have um, meiosis one is separation of the homologs, and meiosis two separation of the chromatids. That's the easiest way to think about it. Okay, and so we can talk about that in a little bit more detail. We talked about the fact that. The, um, the two sister chromatids align with each other and they form four chromatids, which we call a tetrad. And then we split um, meiosis one as a separation of the homologs. So of course we can go through it in more detail, but it's not required. So all we need to know with meiosis, and I, I really do think it's helpful using your fingers. Okay, so we've got our homologs and then we have DNA replication. So we've got sister chromatids and then meiosis one, we have separation of the homologs. Meiosis two, we have separation of the chromatids. Sexual reproduction allows for genetic variation and it does that through several different key ways. In meiosis, we have two processes, independent assortment and crossing over and recombination. That's one, an independent assortment. And then through the process of sexual reproduction, there's random fertilization. It's random in terms of which sperm unites with the egg. And of course, so each sperm has a unique combination of the genes uh, and it unites with, uh, with the egg. So that, that's what we mean by random fertilization. But let's talk about uh, the, these two processes in meiosis, independent assortment and crossing over and recombination. So independent assortment, first of all. So we have, so we've got our, our two, uh, again, talking about an organism with just two homologous chromosomes. Okay, now they can either, and, and then, then we have uh, DNA replication, so we've got two sister chromatids. They can either, uh, a line up like this or like that okay so either like this 
or like that. And so, of course, through the process of, so then through the process of meiosis, the uh, which particular chromatid is in each of the gametes is going to vary. Now, it doesn't seem like it's that important when you've only got uh, one pair of homologous chromosomes, but of course, we've got 23 pairs of homologous chromosomes. So that means we have two to the power of 23 combinations, or that many different combinations, just through independent assortment. Now, the next process is what we call crossing over and recombination. So at the phase of, at, at, so during prophase one, so the first time we go through meiosis, when we've got our homologous chromosomes uh, as a tetrad, we have what we call crossing over, where some of the um, some of the chromosomes actually make contact and cross over with um, with a hom homolog. And when that happens, we can actually getting a swap of genetic material. Like we, so the, the, the chromosomes physically connect with each other and they exchange genetic material. Now, because they're the same genes, it's quite easy for it to, to do. So um, the process of recombination is rejoining of this together. And so we have, um, you know, I guess a shuffling of the, the deck of cards and we move some of the genes, some of the alleles, over to another chromosome. So then, of course, when we go through the process of meiosis, um, those alleles are in a different gamete. So crossing over and recombination is another way in which we get variation. So we've got um, independent assortment, crossing over and recombination, and then, of course, we've got um, and then we've got random fertilization as well. So those three processes are what creates all of the variation that we have in sexual reproduction. Well, nearly all of it, because there's also the process for mutations, which we're going to talk about later as well. So if we go back to the learning goals, we've talked about the role of homologous chromosomes. We've talked about crossing over and recombination and how they demonstrate, uh, how they contribute to genetic variation. We haven't talked about spermatogenesis and oogenesis, so we're going to talk about that in the next video. We have demonstrated how the process of independent assortment and random fertilization alter the variation of genotypes in offspring.